All right, welcome to my rocket laboratory. Um, so this video is not about mushrooms, but this is my channel and I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm gonna be sharing something that I've been working on the last couple of months. I just picked up high powered rocketry last October, November. Uh, me and Junior built a little, a couple little guys, little low powered rockets. And then we got into mid power and then uh, I got level one certified on that one. And then I just got level two certified on this one. So level two is a J, K and L impulse motors. So this is a J motor. Okay, and it has about, what is it? 80 pounds of thrust for like two and a half seconds. Um, and I wanted to start this a little addition to my channel just to track it for other people who are interested in getting into high power rocketry and, and for myself as well. Just like when I first started doing the mushrooms, uh, a lot of it was for me, honestly. Like, I, yeah, I was sharing the information, but I also use it as a reference for myself. So, um, I'm going to be starting my level three. So level three is an M motor, which is like 20 times the power of that something, I think it's 10 or 12 times more. Um, so the M rocket is going to be huge. It's going to be like a six or a 10 inch diameter rocket. And it has like 800 pounds of thrust or something crazy like that. So don't quote me on that number. Um, Here's a fin can. So I'm printing everything, if you haven't figured that out already. I'm 3D printing my nose and fin can, and then I'm using a conventional body tube. So this is a quantum tube, okay? It's a plastic tube. And then this is your standard cardboard rocket body tube. Um, on my level two, I went with pre-glassed. So it's, it's the um, cardboard, but then they put fiberglass over it for you so that's this one that's my level two that one went about a mile a little bit over a mile it was like 5380 feet in about like seven seconds um so yeah that's that's my level two and i wanted to talk a little bit about 3d printing rockets um really quick i'll probably have a couple more in detail ones but uh a couple of things that that how i'm doing it is i'm building it like an assembly like this and then it's infill uh that's my motor mount this is all made out of abs um i have the retainer on the back so the motor slips inside i don't have a i don't have a motor to slip in that right now but basically the motor slips inside slips inside there and then this retaining ring holds it in place um i'm currently able to print these without support so this will come off the printer just like that, you know, uh, just pop it off and pretty much bolt it to the, to the unit. Uh, I'm doing 832 threads, so I'll tap everything out. Um, when I tap it, I'll use a rinse bowl, so I'll tap a little bit, take the tap out, rinse it out, and, and rinse and repeat every like one or two threads to clear out all the chips. Um, for the nose cones, here's an example of a nose cone that I'm working on right now. I do the, the screw thing right there. And then for my recovery, instead of doing the traditional, and this is kind of where I started doing something, at least I feel like I'm doing something that not a lot of people or nobody's really done before, is really reinforce this recovery strap through the body. So there is a loop. I don't know if you can make out that line right there, but there is an ellipse loop that runs up, around, and back again. And it's touching the outer skin here and then the inner skin in there. And then it catches the, the top of the dome of the cylinder on the inside. Um, so the whole idea is that that, that loop, that, that tube is reinforced the whole way by touching the body of either the outer or the inner skin. And that avoids extra hardware, um, which can fail. Um, and it's basically just one string going. And then the same thing is for the fin can. Uh, is one string that goes around this to here and then around this to here and then one knot and one knot and that's it. Um, so it simplifies things, less, less weight, less parts. And this one you can see there's, that's the loop on the back. So I'll string it through, pull it through and then string it through the other way. Um, this one hasn't flown yet. 
I'm waiting for the last launch day. It was like 30 mile an hour winds. It was like 20 mile an hour winds just below that actually. But um, it was a little windy and I didn't want to launch it because this thing was going to go like three quarters of a mile up and it would have went like three or four miles away. Um, on that note, very important if you're going to get into model rocketry or high power rocketry is get a tracker of some sort. Where's my tracker? Here it is. Um, so I went with the cheaper option, somewhat cheaper option, and it's smaller, that's for sure, and simpler. This is a, oh, it's called a Marco Polo. So the trackers are really small. Let me see if I can find one. They're really small. They're about this big. They can fit in even your smallest model rockets, and they're pretty durable. I actually had one accidentally eject my one of my earlier fin cans in my first level two attempt the 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 nose cone rather self-destructed and this thing came falling to earth from a mile up uh and it it came down fine it landed in a field and i found it and then i had to go find the rocket but what i'm getting at is get get a tracker that's like maybe 300 dollars. each tag is 80 dollars, and they're really easy there's no wiring involved um, like with some of the other trackers, here's, here's a newer tracker that I'm working on. You got to wire it up. You got to have a battery. You got to have, you know, all these connections and a little bit more complicated. This is a better device. It, it's, this is GPS. So it, it does more, uh, telemetry, but for just finding your rocket, these are great. Um, a couple pointers for anybody looking to level one and level two, uh, if you want a level one and level two on the same rocket, do a 38 millimeter motor. So here's an example of a level one I motor that would let certify you for level one and then a, a level two J motor. This is a J270. Um, so these these would this would be your level one, and then you'd go for your level two, you do your written test for your level two, you get your level two. Um, and then for your level three, you need like a 75 millimeter or larger, or I think there's a couple 54 millimeters. Um, another thing I would recommend is, so this is a DMS, disposable motor system, okay? You open it up, stick it in there, put your ignition in there, set your charge for your um, ejection. This is like your ejection. There's a timer, and then there's a, a well that you fill up with black powder. Well, um, that you you load that up to your times sometimes you have to remove some time so they have a tool to like screw down into that and remove some of that fuse uh the delay material and then the idea of this is motor ejection so when when this burns out the timer burns through it blows up and it blows the cap out your chutes open up and all that kind of stuff and everything deploys and the rocket comes down to ground this is the way i would recommend doing your level one and level two uh the only kind of electronics that i would recommend besides your tracker is this so this is a shoot release okay especially if you're doing your level two and it's going like a mile or higher um which especially with your smaller diameter rockets you're going to go really high you know if you have a if you have a 38 millimeter motor and you're on a two inch body or a three inch body you're going to go about on, on a j motor you're going to go at about, about a mile or higher unless you're really heavy so that means it's going to drift far so to slow that down you do dual deployment. And what that is, that is using a smaller parachute, like a 12 inch or a 16 inch parachute on motor ejection. That will open up. And then you have your main chute. Let me pull this out and show you guys what a main chute. So you got your main chute, which is like two to three times or four times the size, um, wrapped up in Kevlar. You wrap everything up in Kevlar with these because you don't want to your expensive parachutes to get burned um so you'd wrap this up in kevlar a lot nicer than that <laughs> there's videos on it other people have tons of videos and all this stuff and then you put the chute release on there and what this does is so your your motor ejection will open everything up this one actually has main and drogue um the drogue chute will come out this is the drogue chute right here which is a smaller this one was a little bit oversized for this rocket it was like a 16 inch so this guy will open up, it'll start coming down and it'll come down more straight because it's not falling so fast or it is falling faster. It's going to fall faster. And then once it comes within anywhere from a thousand, if you see this, a thousand 
to 100 feet, depending on what you set this to, this will unclip the rubber band. There's a rubber band that straps around that and holds it together. So it's just falling like a held together bundle and then it'll pop open and that chute will open and it'll slow down for your final descent, which you want like 20 feet per second or less, um, which is like 15 miles an hour, I want to say. And then on Drogue, you're falling around like 60 miles an hour, 50 or 60 miles an hour. So that's a really rough intro to high power rocketry. Uh, you know, I kind of hope to share my hobby to similar to like what I did with mushroom growing, share my hobby, make the entry level a little bit easier for people, especially if you have a printer. I do plan on possibly making printed parts because I definitely have the capabilities to do a small production and I don't expect there to be a huge demand because it's a very small niche. Like there's only a couple thousand people doing high power rocketry in the in the world. Um, but I definitely will have, once they are complete, I will have the STLs available for purchase on like Thingiverse or something like that to where you can download it, print it at home and then build it. Uh, I'm still refining the designs. This one has currently seen a bunch of launches. Uh, for example, this design is the last one that's going to have a three fin. They all have four fins after that because this is not enough stability. So that's one example of just working out the kinks, you know. Um, when, when it's not stable enough, it'll, it'll do a lot of wobbly kind of action as it's going up. And, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the gist of that. And the, the printed fins have been tested, you know, it's definitely not a new thing. I'm not, I'm not, uh, breaking any, you know, doing anything new by printing fin cans and printing nose cones. Uh, I am trying to make it a little bit different than some other people and everybody makes rockets differently right um, but i'm trying to make it more of a i'm a mechanic i like to be able to take things apart so i don't want to glue things a lot of rocketry when i first got into it it was like glue this epoxy this and then you can't ever take it apart or repair it um so i have everything bolt together try to keep it minimalistic uh keep it simple keep it really simple that's the key uh so i'll be doing my level three on an M, what is it, M1350 or something like that. And that is also a DMS. I do have a reloadable casing. I do have a casing for a 29 millimeter. And a casing is, oh, where is it? Oh, it's in my motors. So a casing is like an empty tube that you fill with explosives, not explosives, but you fill with your charge, with your... Um, you fill with your grains, right? So here are some casings. So this is a casing that you unscrew it. You load all your motor to, uh, cartridges in there. And then, you know, it's just like that. You ignite it the same way. But now this is reusable. But this costs like $160. The reloads are like 30% less than buying the RMS. But you have to launch and get this thing back like a bunch of times i don't know the math like 10 times to even make it worth it so especially when you're certifying just stick with the rms or dms because if you lose a casing then you're out of it right you didn't save anything now you just burnt more money in it and and losing rockets is a thing and these are more likely to blow up um because you did something wrong than than an rms motor not uh, our dms not saying a dms motor won't blow up won't cato but Especially if you're new at it and there's a lot of other things you got to get right to get the rocket to launch and come back and everything. Don't want to add extra, extra, you know, things to do and possibly mess up. Keep it simple, stupid, right? That's the, in engineering. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, don't, don't overcomplicate things if you don't have to. Once you get your certs, once you get level one, level two, whatever you want to get, and you're happy at that flying level, go ahead and play around with, you know, reloads and casings and all that kind of stuff. Do a uh, hybrid and experimental motors where you're building your own, pouring your own casings and mixing your own, your own propellant. But when you're certifying, just certify on DMS. Um, give a couple plugs. Shout out to Mark at um, Science Education Center of Wichita. Shout out to Cloudbusters, which is the club that uh, you know hosted the events that I got certified at. And then uh, shout out to Apogee Rockets. They have an awesome YouTube channel and um, great customer service for their products. 
Um, and then also my parachute supplier, hang on a second, uh, Front Range Recovery. Front Range Recovery, another, another veteran uh, military Air Force guy who's into rocketry and he builds parachutes. I don't have one out right now, but they're they are amazing chutes, lightweight, heavy duty, uh, beautiful, built to order. So highly recommend all of those companies if you're looking at getting into high, high power rocketry. Um, I will definitely have more videos as it comes time for me to start developing my, my level three rocket. Currently I'm working on another mid power. This is gonna be going up on a J or an I motor and it's gonna be my first electronic dual deployment uh, where it's electronic shoot release or not electronic main and drogue release. Uh, all my other certs were on motor ejection. So uh, this will be the first one and then that's required to attempt your, your level three. So yeah, um, I, once I get the design worked out, I'll, I'll be sharing my design. I'll be posting progress and plans are to, to launch this next month. I'll probably have a video of that and maybe some video of prep for it, but it's, it's kind of stressful trying to get everything ready and video things. Um, but I will do my best, no promises. Uh, but the level three, I will definitely document all the way through the building and then the launch and, and all of that. And hopefully it goes well. So, cause it doesn't always, so, um, well, thanks for anybody who stayed, stayed around to the end. Obviously this is not a mushroom video, but, uh, this is what I've been working on this winter, this, these last couple months. It's definitely challenged me, which is something that I definitely needed. The, uh, you know, the mushroom industry, I've done a lot of things for, and I've definitely innovated a lot of things and, and created a lot of inventions and things like that. But I'm kind of, kind of at a point where, you know, what else can I do for the industry? So I, I picked up a new hobby and, and so far I'm loving it. And uh, hopefully other people can find joy in it too. Uh, it's, it's kind of expensive, but not as expensive as mushroom, can, mushroom growing can be as long as you don't get too carried away with it. Um, so yeah, hopefully you like this. Uh, stay tuned for, for if I do have any products available. I, I will definitely at minimum have the STLs available on Thingiverse once they're like 100% tried and tested and have all the instructions and stuff. And then uh, in the coming months, I might be printing some, doing like some select runs of, of fin cans and nose cones and kits and be selling them like something like this where you would get a fully printed, ready to assemble uh, rocket, and then you would go ahead and put your chute in it, put your motor in it, rig it all up and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, well, thanks for checking in. You guys have a good one. Take it easy.